for, for everyone. And without further ado, let's crack on. Um, I've got something to show you in the software this week, so um, I'm really pleased about that. And it should be a case that I can break out the software every Wednesday to show you the progress that we're doing. But on that subject, uh, I just want to um, provide some feedback to some comments that were posted, some in uh, Discord channel and some on the forums, specifically about the content of our updates that go out every Friday and the disappointment that there isn't anything more significant. It's sort of like, what are the big updates? Call that an update. You only change one line of code. This is an embarrassment. I shouldn't even bother with these bills, etc., etc. Well, the reason is they're every Friday. You know, you're only ever going to get at best five days of things that have happened, been tested and approved, and then finally released into the build. So you're never going to get like this sudden explosion of features one week because you only had a week between the last update and the one you expected this big update from. So basically the rule of thumb, and it does differ from when we did the, um, the betas, the alphas and betas in 2020, which is instead of just leaving you alone for a month and then hitting you with an almightyly massive update, which could break as much as it fixes, we're going to go this route of doing our Friday builds, which are going to be heavy on testing and heavy on responding to feedback we get once it goes out into the community. And so the updates, by the very nature of that process, will be smaller, um, but hopefully much more stable and predictable. That is to say, part of our update work was improving the announcement system. So it literally lists out what you were expected to look at for that build. Um, so if we say this, 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 and this, four things, just check out those four things for that particular build, because that's all we've really done. I mean, you could root around in the other parts of the software to see what else has been improved on the sly, but we're kind of going to keep to this idea that these are the five things we're going to do. We'll get them done, we'll get them tested, get them ready for public consumption, and then we release them. So it should be a pretty strict diet. What we say, say on Wednesday, you're likely to get on the Friday. So that's how we're going to roll it out. So I apologise, you're not going to get any massive updates. Um, it may occasionally happen, let's say there's a big flood of new art um, or something super visual that we've added to the, to the engine or into a demo or something like that, then sure, you get a big boost. But generally, we're going to be releasing the, um, the updates, the functions along the lines of let's complete a section, then release it, complete a section, then release it. And it will come as sort of weekly builds, so you won't see really huge things going on. So hopefully that explains a little bit. Uh, uh, of why you're not getting large updates every Friday and I do appreciate your patience and of course the updates are going to get more interesting as we roll forward. Um, there's a newsletter going out for our March edition where I explain a little bit more about those exciting things but you've got to wait and watch for that and if you're not subscribed to the newsletter I think you can do it easily enough through our main website. Um, so yeah, we did a bit of an, a clean on our newsletter recently. So if you have been dropped off the list, you can go back to the website and re-add yourself. Uh, but the newsletter is pretty good for creating a summary of everything that's been going on, not just in Game Guru Land, but all aspects of TGC over the previous month. So that is that. And now the long-awaited, let's get into the software and see something. So I'm going to launch my internal build. This is a build that you're going to get in some modified form on Friday, this Friday two days from now. As you can see, we've already started our build list for what you're going to get. This again isn't final. Um, we were playing around with docking and nobody really liked the idea within the inner circle that you are going to have docking removed. So we've basically moved it into the uh, developer tools section. So for those who really, really want docking, we'll still be able to have it in Game Guru Max. But the thing I wanted to show you today is this section. You'll probably remember it from previous builds, but I really didn't like how it was laid out and it was a bit spaced out and it didn't feel right and it wasn't quite where it could be, and now it is. So let me just start off in Sculpt Terrain mode. So of course, for a new user, after they've watched the video and really got familiar with what this section is, you get an actual list of all the sh keyboard shortcuts that this section will use. And we're doing it this way instead of the other way. Remember in the help section, you have the F1 which will give you a full screen of every shortcut within the software. It wasn't particularly useful in that, you know, you had to sort of remember all them keyboard shortcuts, or if you was in a particular section, go to that page and find out which section 
you're interested in and then look for the keyboard shortcuts. Wouldn't it be better if those shortcuts were instantly available as you're in that section? And that's what the philosophy is for the keyboard shortcuts. So on the right, you'll actually see the icon representing the control or the key. And when you hover over it, it tells you the action. So this one be use the left mouse button. This one is press the shift key. This one is hold down the control and press the plus button. Hold down control and press the minus button. Uh, use the WASD keys to move. Use the mouse wheel and press the F key. And of course, these are all of the keyboard shortcuts for being able to manipulate terrain to change the brush size like so. And of course, you've got the these, you see a little, a little bit of a gap between these and these. These are what's called common shortcuts. So these sort of permeate between multiple modes. So moving around the camera with the AWSD keys is true uh, for sculpting as it is when you're painting, as it is when you add vegetation, as it is when you're in object mode. You see, it retains these shortcut keys. And again, scroll wheel in and out, we're in top down board, mode, sorry. And when you press F, you go into free flight mode. And you see the keyboard shortcuts change. So now right mouse button is actually rotating left and right. And it's the G key that takes you back into top down. So the idea is you don't have to scramble around, read user manuals, or somehow instinctively know what keys do. They're actually displayed right there when you need them. And of course, when you're super familiar with the software, bang, you just close it down and it stays closed and it cleans up your interface. So that's basically the idea. By getting rid of the F1 massive screen and putting all the help where you need it in the section that it's related to, hopefully we've just made the um, transition from a brand new user where you're trying to figure out where buttons are into using keys, which of course is a lot more expedited when you want to create levels fast. So that's what we've introduced. You'll be able to play with it on Friday. We've been pretty thorough about making sure we've mapped out all of the keys that's going to be in the software. Some sections uh, that you won't be able to see yet, we've also done them. So, And we've actually created a universal system. So all of these will run through a central piece of code to handle keyboard shortcuts. So if we were to improve this system sometime in the future, it would equally apply to all of the sections. So you get the benefit of that. And of course, if you've got any ideas how that might be improved, certainly feedback. And of course, more importantly, if you find any bugs that are related to this, what we've added, let us know that as well. That's more important, I think. So that's what we've added. Uh, check it out on Friday if you like. Now I'm going to switch over to questions. I'm looking at the clock. We do have four minutes. I could answer some questions in four minutes. Whether I stick to four minutes, well, let's see. Let's start at the top and look for some question marks. As is my custom, it allows me to speed up. And as you can see, super helpful. And the sound of silence will not make for a great broadcast. So there's no timestamps on these, which is a bit of a pity because it'd be nice to know how much I was in utter silence until everyone could start here. But anyone who's got the benefit of watching the recording, I'll just chop off that silent bit at the beginning. I'll maybe cram in some uh, music for you, do a bit of video editing. Okay, let's look for a question. Here we go. This is from Terra Games Z. Uh, when will the enemy do damage to the player? And when will we have a HUD like ammo count and health? Well, the enemy will do damage to the play when the enemy attacks uh, the player, either through me melee or through projectile um, damage. So much as you see in Game Guru Classic. And of course, you'll be able to control the strength of the player and the damage that the weapons inflict. Just as you can do with Classic, we're just going to make that process a little more intuitive in Game Guru Max. Um, and the second part of that question, well, we have a HUD, like ammo count and health. Yes, oh yes, you will. <laughs> We're certainly going to provide those hoods. Um, so you just straight out of the box, if you drop in a weapon, play the game, there's the hood. You can see how much ammo you've got and how much is in the clip, all that kind of thing. But the cool thing is, um, is down the road, you'll be able to configure that hood. You'll be able to control where it is on the screen and what kind of de details or values it displays and even changing the images that the hood uses just to give you that ability to totally customize your game. Um, so look out for that, that's gonna be a really cool feature and it will work both in 2D and in VR as well. So your HUDs will look um, correct when you're in that VR experience because you can't really have all the HUDs right in front of you to kind of wrap around the head. But we'll look at that further down the road when we get into a bit of VR uh, demonstrations in these broadcasts. So looking for another question 
Um, any question marks? Uh, here we go. Here's one from Matt Fellow. Okay, I didn't use a question mark, but I'm going to forgive him on this occasion. Um, when I can create a level, save it and test in VR, then I'll install GG Max. That's fair enough. Um, you know, we're not forcing out all these Friday builds on anyone. We had VR in the early 2020 betas, um, but then we created a policy that would only actually put something in builds that we considered to be section complete. And so you're not actually feeding back on that like half baked or incomplete stuff. You're feeding back on what we would consider to be finished. Um, and VR wasn't finished, which is why we removed it. When you try and click the VR button, you'll get nice friendly. No, not yet. Uh, but we'll absolutely let everybody know when the VR is going to go back in. And then at that point, absolutely go check out the build and then play around with the VR that we have in mind. Um, which will not just be running around VR, which we already had, but things like the hub controls and the and how the controllers inter interface with how the player moves and things like that. Um, we're going to take inspiration for some of the best VR games, of course, um, because they've done all the hard work. We just take the best ideas for VR control and put them in. But until those are in, we're not going to enable the VR button. Um, and certainly scream to the heavens if you think, that's a terrible idea, I want VR right now. Or maybe you think VR should be some sort of developer tool. Or it's deliberately activated, but everyone understands it's sort of half-baked, but you can still play with it. Um, please let me know in the comments, in the forum, once I create the thread for this broadcast later on. Um, looking for another question. Here's one from Super Confident Man. One, uh, what I struggle to understand is why, when the original launch date was last September, is there no hint of an immediate launch uh, after all these months? It's because we went back to the drawing board uh, around November, December, looking at the product and deciding, you know, is this what we really want to hang our hat on and pin our flag to? And the answer was a resounding no. And because of that internal soul searching, we laid out a big design for what we really wanted the product to be. And that was a lot of work. And it is a lot of work. And you're going to be seeing that work unfold in 2021. And it also meant that even though internally we have an idea um, when we would like to release different versions of, of this product, right now it's just too early to stay because even though the designs are pretty much done, the dev planning is still underway in terms of figuring out how long each thing takes. There's another aspect in why we don't really want to disappoint again. If we tell you a particular date and then you don't get it on that date, it's just more disappointment. So we're just going to be honest and say, look, it's an open release. Um, if that's clearly unacceptable then you know you're gonna have to <laughs> i don't know what be patient or go and use another tool for a while and maybe just check in on game guru max um you know in passing maybe that's the approach you should take um, and of course people who do want to stick around and just check the progress as it unfolds then that's cool too so looking at another question this is um, Luke, this is the Lee searching for question marks. I found one. It's down here. This is from Martin Oliver. Uh, question: Well, when the tab key clipping return? Yeah. Um, do let me know in the forum thread later um, if that's something you want to see because it was on the list for keyboard shortcuts, but it was removed. It wasn't super perfect. There were situations where the tab key, some people press it, and nothing happened because the clip height was different or they were doing a building on top of a cliff and stuff like that. It just felt like it was something thrown in because if you know about it, it's cool, but everybody else just wouldn't know what to do with it or if they used it, you know, we'll just switch it on and off and all that kind of stuff. So we're still looking for a way to have the same experience and be able to open up a building and then edit the insides of it, but maybe something a little bit more intuitive than just a tap key that just slices your world in half. Um, there's a couple of great ideas out there that we've been looking at, but we're not galvanised on exactly what we're going to do for that. But I do think there will be a system to be able to sort of rip off the, the ceiling and a couple of walls so you can sort of edit the contents of a room or a building and stuff like that. But for now, it's not going back in until we know for sure that's our solution and that's what we're going to drop down and everyone can start using it. But I don't think we're at that point yet. I think you'd just like to see our lighting model corrected, the UI finalised and all of the stuff that we've been taking out, put back in in a completed state. So here's a question, uh, any soft date on when VR will be back in? Um, please refer to my previous verbal answer. Um, here's another question, this is from Rebomba. When will it be released? <coughs> please refer to my previous blurb and waffle. Um, here's another question, different question. Is the Yeti USB make or XLR? I believe it's USB. 
My USB ports are um, rapidly running out. Everything's on my USB, including the Yeti, which is a pretty cool piece of kit. It's not broken. I have it suspended from my ceiling with a lanyard. It keeps the vibrations down, and I have no problems with it whatsoever. And I do get a couple of thumbs up from time to time when people hear I'm using the Yeti. And I'm not sponsored by Yeti. It's just something that was recommended to me, and it was really over the top when I bought it. But it really has come in handy, and hopefully the audio is coming through loud and clear when I remember to use the right microphone. <laughs> okay, looking for a question. Super confidential man, is there an alternative to the mouse scroll wheel? I can't use mine. Also, will the mouse keys be supported? Great question. Um, can you remap that scroll wheel? It's odd that you don't have a scroll wheel, but yeah, I've seen Mies with just a left button and a right button and no actual scroll wheel, or the scroll wheel is just an awkward thing to use. Um, feel free to make your suggestions on what would be a good remap for the scroll wheel. Effectively, it needs to be something that you can move in and out with. Could even be two additional keys. And whether you can configure that sort of in the settings panel, so it changes those shortcuts for you, or whether it's something we'll just actually build in as a backup to the mouse wheel. So please let us know what keys you would you fancy for replacing the mouse scroll wheel. Um, one more question. I'm just checking out the time. I have definitely exceeded those four minutes I allocated for us. This is the last one, and it's from Johan um, Gambrill. Gambrill? Okay, I can do that properly if I could read it a bit slower, but I'm going to try to be fast here. Uh, short answer, how many users can play in MMO? Massive multiplayer online mode. None. <laughs> we don't have massive multiplayer online mode in Game Guru Max. So if you're looking for that kind of game maker, I think there's a couple of really cool things out there that actually are built for creating massive multiplayer online games. Um, Game Guru Max will predominantly be single player experiences and that's what we're going to put all of our energies into. So just to make sure that I'm not making any false expectations or creating stuff like that, don't think about Game Guru Max as the ultimate game maker for MMO. It absolutely is not. So thanks for all the rest of the questions. I'm just scrolling down, there's just a few left. But as is my custom, I do want to leave a few to put into the forum later on otherwise new questions keep popping up and i'll be here all day <laughs> answering the very latest question and i do have to make a cut off and of course my 15 minutes is now ridiculously overdue but maybe i can deduct a couple of minutes because of all that silence we had at the start so maybe it's not too bad after all and certainly after the edits so that's it for this wednesday as usual there'll be another broadcast next wednesday at 4 p.m gmt and remember this is a pre-order product right now, so you can get a 25% uh, discount on the pre-order. And with that, you will get access to our Friday builds every Friday, all the way through until we actually release this product as a real solid concern. And then you can start playing with it and making your games. So until next Wednesday, I hope you enjoyed this broadcast and I will speak to you all next week. Bye.